I was wounded on November 17th of 1965. I kind of left Vietnam in Vietnam. I've tried my best to not ever brought it home with me. I went along about my life after I got back and I think that was one of the best things I ever uh, did as far as that goes. Uh, I was in the Army for three years, 66 through 69, and I served uh, 13 months in Korea. I lost two guys when I was, uh, two friends of mine that were uh, close friends when, you know, I went to school with and one I hung around with from Sun Prairie, they went to Nam and never came back. And uh, for a while, I, I had uh, mixed emotions about doing this Badger Honor flight because I really didn't think I deserved it. While I had it pretty cushy over in Korea, uh, there were friends of mine, comrades of mine, uh, these guys here, were in Vietnam in just terrible, unbelievable conditions, steamy jungles, uh, getting shot at every day, not knowing if you're gonna, you know, make it through the next day. And I'm over in Korea just, you know, going to like a eight to five job. You know, started telling this to my wife and other comrades and friends of mine. My wife knows my feelings about this and she just kept saying, Dan, I'm getting really upset with this, the way you're feeling about this. And she said, you served your country, you put in your time, you put in three years, and it could have gone either way. You could have gone to Vietnam and uh, you just happened to end up in Korea. I was in, uh, in the service. I went to Vietnam in 1968. I worked in the bomb dump, the munitions. I assembled 500 pound bombs. I expect, expect, expected to be there for a year, but I was called home after 83 days. My mother was dying of cancer and my dad was having heart problems. So I came home. My guardian is my oldest son, Jared. He'll be uh, traveling as the, my guardian, and he's also looking very forward to the trip. He's uh, been very interested in uh, the, my time in service. He's always asked me about it. I've been at the airport for uh, other veterans, and when we step off the top of the, at the very top of the, the steps, the, the feeling, the sense of the number of people that are there cheering you and welcoming you is going to be just unbelievable because for the Vietnam veterans, we never received a welcome home. Uh, I served in the uh, U.S. Army, uh, the 10th Division. Uh, from 1955 until uh, 1958. When uh, I uh, went into the Army, there were six or seven of us out of Oregon that went in at the same time. And uh, there are six of those gentlemen who never lived long enough to have this opportunity to go to, on the Badger Honor Flight. And I'd just like to name them. There's Don Martinson and Walt Henry, which graduated from Oregon High School in 1952. And there's Jim Elliott, Roger Harklow, Harry Brickner, Jerry Hagee, who have passed on and uh, they served with me in Germany, but they have never had the opportunity to go on the Badger Honor Flight. So for me, it's uh, really special that uh, hopefully I can represent those uh, fellow uh, soldiers and classmates and friends in, in Washington. I told my son um, learning to become a teacher and I was with the student uh, Wisconsin Education Association out in uh, DC and I called home when I had a break and um, one thing led to another, and my son was about 14 then. He said, Dad, have you been to the Vietnam Wall? Because I never talked about it, like many of us. I never talked about Vietnam. Uh, I said, no, I haven't. Are you going to go? 
and I hesitated and he said, promise me you'll go. All right, the Washington Monument was right over there. I went down the street a couple blocks and I, I went to one of the panels and right away I saw two guys I was in basic training with that made the, made the wall and I uh, collapsed. I, I was on all fours and I just sobbing. I couldn't go any further and about three, four months ago I, I told Brad that there's a chance I could be on the honor flight coming up, but this is why I'm going, this is for him. Uh, when I was in drafted, I spent 13 months with Larry W. Jones, which is a fella whose memory bracelet I have on, and when we was on the boat going over, I was on the cot above him, and we were on the same track, in the same unit, in the same platoon for the time over there. That we were together basically from the 5th of September till April 14th of 1968 when I hit a landmine and he got moved to a different track, which I was in an armored unit and I was the driver of a personnel carrier. This bracelet that I've got, it's got his name, his rank, where he was killed, the date he was killed, where his hometown is and where his name is on the wall. So I had plans to go down to Bridgeport, Illinois to visit the parents of Larry. And I think I got as far as Bloomington Normal and I couldn't do it. I turned around and came back. <clears throat> and just the end, the last weekend in June, I met another fellow and we was down there. So I finally got down there. I was only 50 years late, but <laughs> it, it was my brother. <laughs>